Okay, so this last one shot before I get to my anniversary special. Well, anniversary on the site. MLP site. It's something very, very special. This is probably my second most popular and well-known fic, other than Fall. And in some cases, it's even more popular in more light. 292 upvotes. Only 8 downvotes. 5,623 views. No trust page, sadly. And if I ever see a trust page for this story or as an alchemy student, I would be really, really happy. But... This, and the story already has a live read, but hey. Isaac Asimov has many, 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 many reads of his stories, and he does some on his own, so. Well, I know. And besides Fall, it's one of the ones I'm most proud of. So, the question is, why? Why is this story so popular? Why does this currently have 292 upvotes? Why does this have so many favorites? Why did this get a live read? Well, only one thing to do. Let's find out with... Still need it. By me. Do you still need me? A mother's destiny is to see her children grow up. A teacher's destiny is to watch their tunes to achieve their goals. A sister's destiny is to see their little sibling become strong on their own. After these destinies are fulfilled, is the teacher, mother, and sister still needed? Star Swirled Bearded, as copied by Clever Clever. A majestic white alicorn stood on the balcony of her castle in the city of Canterlot, watching a young purple alicorn fly away from her happily. The alicorn was her faithful student. She so just finished talking to her former teaser about plans she had for her five faithful friends. Plans that the white alicorn agreed to and what told her to get on right away. While her fly off to her home in Ponyville, the princess let out a deep and thoughtful sigh as she ran a hoof through her ethereal mane. Congratulations, Celestia. Your student has graduated, done something that none of your other students could, and now has moved on. Your sister is living her own life now. Your niece is living on her own. She moved away from the balcony and lowered her head. Am I still a demon? Oh, sir, it's an easy thing to answer. You're still needing to raise the sun, right? Celestia lowered her wings. It shook her head at the little voice and tried to reassure her. After all, it was only after her and her sister proved they could do the work of one, what took a whole team to do, that they discovered their connections to the almost immortal bodies, it would be so easy for her to reteach a new team of unicorns to raise the sun. Or simple, just grab Twilight and teach her the proper spell to raise the sun and just leave her in charge. She wouldn't even need me to guide her in the proper direction. She thought to herself as she walked down a long marble hallway to the balcony. She's already planning on giving advice or persistence to her friends. She turned her head to some empty rooms Twilight called their offices. A golden nameplate on each side of the door. Fluttershy, Royal Ecological Advisor. Rarity, Royal Negotiator and Ambassador. Rainbow Das, Royal Austinus Director. Celestia chuckled at that one. Knowing Twilight could come up with something better than what she gave to persistence. Pinkie Pie, Royal Morale Ambassador, Party Planner and Baker. Applejack. Royal Advisor. A warm smile came across her face. The next step would be to tell them how to become alicorns, and they would be by her side always until the day she gave up her immortality. She turned to her flight and looked at the sun that adorned it. To become an alicorn was to become the personified case of your talent and abilities. That was what happened to her and her sister when they took their love of the sun and moon to the next step. Went on that long journey. They defeated Discord. Their immortality was only a side effect of being connected to near immortal bodies themselves. 
All Twilight would have to tell them that in order to be like her is to tell Rainbow to break into that speech mission that all speechers draw their power from, not racist speechers that lie within. Verity would have to defeat the embodiment of greed. Albusak would cultivate the legendary golden apples. Pinkie Pie would have to make Anger itself happy. And Fluttershy would have to turn hate itself into a spirit of kindness. No small feat were any of these tasks. The ones she knew that the bears could do easily. Then, where would that leave her? Did I still need it? Celestia asked herself out loud as she walked down another hallway of her castle, looking outside the window to look at the midday sun. Sure you are. Twilight may have grown up as a student, but one of the Cadis still needs you. A sigh escaped her lips as she again argued with her reason. Cadis has her own husband in her own kingdom now, and Luna... <laughs> a tuggle escaped the Sword Queen's lips. Has become her own mayor now. No longer that little filly who asked forgiveness for that day. Smiling, she turned from the window and walked down another hall, only to stop when she reached a well preserved room. It was the only room she demanded to be brought over from the old castle. The most special room in the world to her. Winnesaw's room. As she walked in, she had a flashback to a day so long ago. I got a sister! I got a sister! Big made Philly says he hopped around a crib with a crescent moon on the front. Putting both foes out to the side, she leaned over to the edge to look at the little blue Philly asleep within. Hello, Lulu. My name is Celestia, and we're going to be the best sisters ever. Oh, and you know what? One day, we'll be the princesses of everything. But don't you worry. I will be great. We'll share everything. I'll roll sometimes, and you'll roll sometimes, okay? The little blue Philly looked crystally at the strange white being in front of her. Dabbled a little, then wrapped her hoof around a pink mane. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Atia, your pink sister. I was born first, so I need to protect and watch over you. Don't you ever worry about a thing. Celestia stood in now, almost the empty room, and rubbed her hoof where the crib used to be. I said, your pink sister, best friend forever. And how well did you keep your promise to protect her for those years? Beautifully. Celestia says she walked around her room, memories flooding in her mind. Of the defeat of discord against all odds, and how the ponies of old honored their win with leadership. Of how they fought together against foe after foe after foe. She began to remember the things they did. She began to dance and move around the floor, thrusting her horn like a little school filly, before falling to the old bed, giggling. It was like she and her were invincible, unstoppable, and un... No. Not unbeatable. I couldn't stop them from infecting her and taking her over. Small tears came to her face as we get to think of her first and greatest mistake. Celestia, we are tired of the waiting! But I yelled as he barged into the throne room, past some of the guards and petitioners. Celestia calmly dismissed the court and turned to her sister, a tired look in her eyes. This conversation again. So he had this talk with her beloved sister one too many times. Luna, I keep telling you, the ponies are far too used to sleeping, not working during the day gift, and how much more time is needed, dear sister? How much more? I'm such a sleep through the night. Not a single one of them will stay up to love our constellations. Not a single man or stallion wishes to go out to enjoy our beautiful moonlight that we bring them. Luna yelled, the unseen smoky mist rolling behind her. Luna, you can still do something for them. You protect their dreams and stop the feelings from their nightmares. And how often does we get appreciated for that? How often does we hear from the mouths of babes? Praise be to the princess of the night. See, so I've protected us from the nightmares. Never! The feelings and cults of this world all thank the mothers and fathers of her simple teddy bear for their protection from the horrors of the nightmare. The dark blue princess of the night gritted her teeth in rage, holding everything in. But how often doth we hear a praise Celestia who praise the sun? Praise the sun for giving us the crops in life. Every us. Damn! Time! Luna, I told you. 
Just don't tie me. They will go to Stargate as much as I left you. Always everywhere will try and plot new courses to different lands because of your lovely stars. It will care for each other by the moonlight. Celestia was then interrupted by a slam of a hug from Luna that broke the ground beneath her. Thought is a load of bone and thoughts know it, dear sister! Luna, language. Celestia said, taken aback by her sister's tone. We don't only speak the truth, my dear sister! Luna said, a bit of venom in her voice. There will never be enough time. We have tried to set up festivals and celebrations to bring them some love and joy for the night that they have for your day. But even then, we hear the words of them. Don't go on the night. Monsters exist and will eat you. Beware of the night, for the bear of the moon will come and eat you. They have called to call me Nightmare Moon under their breath, sister! A small smirk came to her as she began to think out loud. Maybe they should fear me. Maybe that they would appreciate the night. Or perhaps no day at all. Luna! Celestia yelled, rising from her throne. You are acting like a jealous little filly who isn't getting her way! Now! Turning her head away from her sister, pointing her hook to the door. Go to your room! I have royal business to attend to, and we can discuss this little problem then! Luna raised a huff in protest, but then slammed it into the ground in a huff, turning her away from her sister walking away. As she did, a smoking hand rubbed to Luna's chin. Maybe we could help you appreciate their night. After all, why should they ignore you? Is your Celestia light? Celestia rose from the bed, small tears rolling down her white cheeks. She needed me then. But I ignored her. Then I had no choice but to... She shuddered at the memory of how she couldn't use their full power to return her sister. Because her greatest friend was no longer by her side. I was needed, but... I failed. As she got up, she remembered the previous inhabitant of that room. The one who returned her heart to her, and the youngest member of her family. She smiled as she remembered how she did fulfill that need her sister desired, and watched her for over a year. Though, her sister became shy and recluse for a year. She did come out one fateful night. And who was it that helped Luna reconnect with her subjects? Twilight. Celestia says she walked to the door of the room. Before turning her head, it gave a soft smile. She remembered how happy Luna was that now they loved her at night. And ponies appreciated everything she had given them. And now, she had formed bonds with the elements in the night court. And now, she is her own filly. A great princess who no longer needs her shield. She wiped a hoof along her cheek to wipe a tear away. Am I saying that? This thought would be haunting her throughout most of the day as she walked through the door of the old bedroom. As she walked down the hall, the voice spoke again. Well, of course. There's your niece. She needs you. Right? Celestia sighed. There was a time when that was true. As she spoke, she could hear the laughter of a young alicorn through the halls. A young pink alicorn ran through the halls of the castle. A big smile on her face. She had just become an alicorn a few days ago thanks to her being able to wield emotions so well that she could reverse the magic of an amulet meant to drain the love out of a pony. She cheerfully ran out the hall before running back to her aunt. So, I can really live with you forever? Yes, Cadence. She smiled as she looked down at the little filly beneath her hooves, smiling. And, and, I get to be the princess and pull something too? Young Cadence says. She looked up at Celestia with an aristocratic smile. One day, Celestia smiled. Is there a way? Cadence looked down with a frown on her face before looking back up with a bit of hope in her eyes. You could bring back mom and dad? Celestia frowned at a question. As much as I wish I could, my little one, I can't. There are some things. Turning her head, she made a quick look up at the sky and sighed that even I can't do. Cadence sniffed a little, tears rolling down her cheek. I. I thought so. They killed each other when Princess Stone took away all their love. 
I left them with nothing but hate. I just... They raised me like their own for five years. And yeah. Uh, Celestia pulled a crying pink alicorn into a hug with her wings, draping her hose over her. Shh. I know. It's hard to accept when someone you love is gone from your life. But give it time and the pain will hurt less. Celestia then looked down into Philly. Maybe, if you like, I could be your parent from now on and help to fill your heart. I want that. Kane says she nuzzled her head to Celestia's chest. As it happened, Celestia's heart was not the only hole that was filled. Celestia found another sister in the young Philly. Through the years, he would watch this young Philly grow and slowly into a fun-loving teenage mare. Though she was as kind as the days he brought her to the castle, she was still as prone to the usual teenage antics. It was here she decided to intervene. Cadence? I think it's time you learn some responsibility and it's a princess. I care for some pony. Billy? What do you have in mind? Keynes asked. Well, silly. Celestia said, looking down at her young niece. Well, silly. Really? Keynes asked sarcastically. Yes. I think it would do you a world of good. As a matter of fact, I think a certain cadet has a little Philly sister that needs looking after now. Nay, he's in training. What was his name? Oh, yes. Shining armor. Cadence blessed the name of the young cadet. So you made a few passes yet recently. Not knowing her aunt had been recently watching. Oh, really? Yes. Her name is Twilight Sparkle. I think it would be great for you to babysit. Years passed through an instant in Celestia's mind. As he saw another memory of her walking in on Cadence at Shining. What are you two doing? Shining put a hook behind his head in embarrassment as he broke the kiss. Well, you see, see, she was in heat, and I was here to help her fix her air conditioning. It just so happens her air conditioning spell was above her bed. Celestia so leaned against the wall, not believing the story. And why was she beneath you? Because, uh... He says she fixed her mane, got up. I need to, uh, direct him to position his control of magic to fix it. Okay, then. Celestia so took out a little. Just make sure you use protection spells. I don't want to be a great aunt too early. She says he left a blessing shining Keynes behind. Her mind had flashed to two years later, a month after thrashing the gala, and she sees Keynes before her, a sister, with tears in her eyes. What? Tia! Oh, look! 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 I got! I got! She said tears in her eyes as she showed her ring off to her aunts. Luna let out a squeal of happiness as he hugged her knees in midair and nuzzled her while Celestia was it content. This was, for her, one of her proudest moments. This led to her least proud moment. Luna quickly skipped that memory and moved on to the next, where Cadence was standing before her two aunts once more. I... I am? Luna turned to her sister and smiled. Yes, you are. When we heard that the Empire had reappeared, we did a deep investigation into the archives and discovered that the last queen escaped before the spell activated, living out her last days in hiding. She moved to Cloudsdale where she shed her immortality and lived amongst the mortals till she died after her first child was born. Years later, the royal bloodline led to you. We also have reason to believe that yours is not the only royal bloodline that has been lost through the years that has also popped up. There is another? Keynes asked. Yes, Celestia said, but we need more evidence before either of us can be sure. Celestia walked by Keynes' old room and smiled softly. And so did my young niece walk out of my life to live on her own. A full-grown mare with her own kingdom, her own family, and a life filled with new things to explore on her own, without that old white alicorn near her. She sighed to herself. Am I still needed? This question burned to her mind as she neared some stairs that led to her room. Of course you are! Twilight! Celestia shook her head, offered one last argument. She grew up. She doesn't need me anymore. At that, Celestia put her heart to her heart, again, the final piece of her heart, was he had filled with many friends and allies over time. 
but one, but only one of two that she loved like a daughter. You know? If I had made this just two years later, when Rainbow Rocks came out and I fell in love with Sunset, I would have added Sunset to the story. I really would have. I would have added her. Turn her head slightly to look back down the stairs. So you remember the little filly that used to live in these halls inside. Celestia walked to the darkly lit castle and heard some of the sounds move on the hallways. Slowly, she turned to the source coming from the room of a young filly. Twilight, what's the matter? I don't know. I just began to sleep and I started to think of Mom, Dad, and Shining at the night. Am I? She began to cry again. My dearest student, Celestia said as she sat with her little filly. It's alright to feel homesick on your first day. She draped her wings over her little one and cuddled her close. But you'll be alright. You'll see. But I... I... So I began to cry. Tears rained down her violet cheeks. Shh. Come stop your crying, it'll be alright. Come take my hoof and hold it tight. I will protect you from all around you. I will be here, don't you cry. Cause you'll be in my heart. Twilight's thoughts began to slow down and she looked up to her mentor. Smiled, snuggled into her white chest. Oh yeah, definitely would have added Sunset to the story. The smile came to the Sun Princess. She leaned in and kissed her forehead. Falling asleep with the filly in her legs. Through the years, she watched the young filly grow into the mare she always knew she would become. However, over time, the young student grew into something more for the white alicorn. The teacher slowly became a mother and the student, a daughter. Every time she would read a story to the young filly, take care of her when she was sick, chase the nightmares away, and would protect her from the most dangerous spells just because he caused the love between her and her daughter to grow. It was why she gave the most important duty to her, the duty of bringing home a special sister. Hmm? A letter? Dear Celestia, I have... Oh my! Is it that time already? Celestia looked to the sky, a smile forming on her face. Luna, dear, I'm going to be sending you a welcome home party. A big smile came to her face to see right down her response. It was here that her suit did her proud. A dart she would always love, and a dart she would always trust. No, not always. There was that one moment, that one second you did not trust her. That one split second you failed to trust someone you loved like a daughter. And it led to your second failure. Now the years passed by in a blur. Showing her the one time she lost faith in her student. The one time she failed her niece. The last time she failed to protect the best outcome. The second time she failed someone close to her. She can now hear Twilight trying to hold back her tears. As he asked Celestia the question. If I was wrong. Was he still trusting me? If you actually found out that I was wrong in everything I had said about kids, would you still? Celestia had her back to her student, tears beginning to well up in her eyes. She realized what the question was, what her student really was asking. Oh, Twilight, my dearest beloved student, the way Alicorn turned and pulled her student into a tight embrace. If you were wrong, if the worst had happened and you made the greatest mistake of your life, I would never stop loving you. You don't know how hard it was to pick between you and Cadence at that moment. It was like choosing a favorite daughter, or between you and Luna. I had to go to the one that was hurt the most. But be assured, if I had found you gone without a trace, I would have moved heaven and hell to find you again. Tearfully, the princess looked down at her little filly. The question is, after Hug from Twilight quickly interrupted. Always. I will always trust you, Celestia. I guess we'll see.
Things like this happen, huh? Celestia asked. Between mothers and daughters. And now, that little filly, who I watched grow up for never first day as he came to me, is all grown up. It's going to be a great new year alongside her friends. Tears flowed down Celestia's face as he walked up the stairs. Am I still needed? It was a question that had been burning her heart all day. Ever since Twilight told her she was going to give her friends royal advice and assistance so they could always work together. Since the idea of bestowing Alicorn Hood on the bears went to her mind, it was a question she did not have the answer for. As a mother, I fulfilled my duty. My two daughters grew up. Three. As a teacher, I succeeded. Twilight has become a proud student and is ready to teach others. The student has become the teacher. The teacher to student. As a sister, I had my second chance to fulfill my destiny. Succeeded there as well. She so reached the top of the stairs, sighing greatly. Is there any point to my being here anymore now that she was interrupted by small moans and whimpering from Luna's room? Luna! Racing quickly, she ran to her sister's room to find a dark blue unicorn lying in bed. Oh dear. Luna still wiping her tears. I'm so sorry you had to hear that. We can assure you that nothing goes wrong. You heard nothing. Celestia so arched an eyebrow in disbelief. Nothing? Then why are you crying? She then walked slowly to her sister's side and sat down, holding her close. It was nothing, sister. Just a stupid dream, nothing more. The blue alicorn turned her head away from her sister. I know steady for potential dreams to have nightmares. Luna, we swore to talk to her about everything from now on. Remember? Luna looked at her sister began to cry to her chest. <laughs> oh dear! I dreamt that Twilight decided she wanted her own country. Then all the questions because she went mad with power we granted her. When you and Keynes and the other banners were to stop her. She, she killed you! I couldn't do anything except to watch! It made me watch again and again and again. Now the Luna, our princess, began to break down in tears. As the Solar Queen rubbed her back gently. Oh, Luna. You shouldn't get over or up over a silly dream like that. Celestia sat a smile on her face. She began to rub her hose along Luna's back. Something like that won't ever happen. Luna looked up, eyes red from tears. I love it, you. I'll get it not. Because I won't let it happen, sister. I will never let anything endanger you. Twilight or Canids, so long as I live. I'll always be here to help correct Twilight on the path she should be taken. I will never leave you alone. If she won't listen to me, then her sisters will back her up. Promise? A warm smile came to Celestia as she realized the answer to her question. Always. Holding her sister like this, reminding her that a mother's duty is never finished. So we will always love her child, and will always be there to comfort and guide them to a safe place. A sister will never abandon her sibling. Always find more ways to protect their families. A teacher never stops teaching, only giving new lessons to their students. Am I still needed? Yes, Lena whispered as he snuggled into her sister, overhearing that question. Tia? Yeah. Yes, Lena? Celestia so asked, looking down at her sister. May you stay with me until the sunset? I don't want to sleep alone, Luna requested. Of course. <laughs> Celestia said, chuckling. We haven't done that in years. She then snuggled up close to her dear sister. I talk to the elements. Maybe, maybe the reason that this story is so well liked of mine, and it's probably my favorite, is because it's so personal. I'm growing up. 
I love brothers growing up. My mom has a great life now. My little brother has a great life. So I'm asking myself this question. And I think everybody's had this type of moment where they had a little brother, or a student, or a child, and they grow up and they leave. What's your point now? Do you go from here? Are you still a necessity? Your job's done. <laughs> Bravo. But in a way, I think I answered it. In a way, I think this is probably a good personal fic. And I think that's why so many people love it. Because they do connect with Celestia on some level. They do understand her plight. And I think this is probably one of the times I've had Celestia as most motherly. I gotta admit, even rereading this, I was tearing up. Because these are the questions I think any of us ask when we're done a job. Where do we go? Are we still needed? How do we move on? <laughs> My little brother is doing something based off of this story. I'm, I'm guessing a Naruto story. And what's the best to look on that? Monday, though, as the anniversary of being five years on this site, in honor of My Little Pony ending, we present to you one of my favorite epics that still has a lot of effects and a lot of things that's been going on since that recently. I present to you Equestrious Mirage. Enjoy.